Have you ever had an image pop into your head and you couldn't quite let it go? It could be a person, an animal, perhaps a number of people. It could be fairly innocent or intentionally macabre. It's very hot in the city and there is no escaping the heat. I've been kept awake at night and napping during the day. It must be that busy brain syndrome again. When it's cool enough, usually at night, I'll take the dogs out and go for a walk. I shouldn't really, but it helps clear my head. On my frequent walks, an image pops into my head, and it's one that I can't shake. So the first thing I did this morning was try to draw it out. Once again, I'm not a fine artist. It's always simple with me just long strokes with a pen as I try to connect the dots and once more I use some colours as I've always liked little pops of colour in my drawings. This image is of a hooded figure in the forest. It's wearing a cloak, a long cloak with the hood up. We can't tell whether it's male or female yet. That's part of the mystery. However, there is a dark air about it. I've decided to use this scene in my Heathens series. There's a particular part in book two where I'm being hit pretty hard by writer's block. In this part of the book, I will try to introduce a character who will go on to play a larger role, I suspect. I think this cloaked character will fit in perfectly. Heathens is a magical series a fantasy filled with a wonderful world of witches, warlocks, and magical folk, but not as we know it. It has warring worlds, peace packs, and blood magic. It centers around two prestigious houses hidden in plain sight on the banks of the River Thames in London. These houses are centuries old and are used to house young orphaned witches and warlocks as they prepare for the heathen world. I'd always wanted to write a witch or warlock series, particularly since there were so many myths, folklores and legends I wished to include. In this scene, someone is stumbling upon this character in the woods. I've intentionally left the cloak devoid of colour, as I don't have any colours that are right for it. Naturally, I'm still using my acrylic paints, as not being an artist, I don't see the need for watercolours. I believe they can be quite extravagant and would hardly be used. I imagine the lone figure standing in the clearing, alone, surrounded by trees, leaves and plants. A few plants that will play a huge role in the character story. And as I work on this simple drawing, I make up a few poisonous plants that will play a part in the story arc and through the entire series. Drawing is not a form of procrastinating or time-wasting, although some may see it that way. Rather, it helps me push past the writer's block. And as I start with the first stroke of the pen, an entire world or character is revealed before me. What will this character be like? Will they be villainous and dark at heart, or a hero? I really don't believe in heroes, I think we're all slightly villainous at heart. Within us all, there is the good and the evil. We just suppress the darkness within. As a character comes to life, so does the plot lines. I begin to imagine how they will interact with the other characters, the chaos they will unleash. Will they be an outright villain we hate, or one of those we quietly root for? Will they be bad for the entire series or turn over a new leaf midway when they realize the error of their ways. By the time the drawing is finished, my writer's block is gone, and suddenly I'm filled with ideas and new possibilities.